Ladies and gentlemen of the house, some of you know what I've been going through over the past year. And many of you know what I've been going through over the last six weeks. The loss of my mother-in-law in January and the great loss of my mother on Saturday has taken a huge toll on me and my family. And yet, I mustered up enough energy to be here with you today because this particular piece of legislation is especially harmful and hurtful. And my mother, who was an amazing woman, raised me to speak up and to speak out. And she taught me the importance of standing up for what I believe in. And I believe that this bill should be voted down. I stand here before you today as the daughter of Anita Williams and the granddaughter of Myrtle Collins and the great granddaughter of Clorinde Hall. My great grandmother could not vote before 1965, but as soon as she got the chance to get registered, she didn't miss an election. In fact, she would walk five miles to town in the big city of Prentice to vote, and then she would walk five miles back home. Little did she know that her sacrifices would lead to her great granddaughter being in the state capitol. She was adamant about voting because even though she was poor, she believed in the American dream. And in order for us to achieve the American dream, we must improve on our lawmaking. We have a responsibility, state representatives, to crush laws that could even be perceived as having a racist effect. Because if passed, they legitimize a certain narrative and that's where racist ideas can bubble up and have an effect on society and become dangerous. If we are sincere about creating a more perfect union, we have to have a more perfect understanding of our past. Now, I've been told by many of my colleagues that the language doesn't do anything. It's just so that some of you can go back home come election time and brag about how you were able to codify a detrimental piece of legislation. Well, I'm here to tell you today that the language means something. It means something to me. It means something to my children. It means something to black people and to people of color. The intent is not as critical as the outcome. Censoring teachers, dismantling education bit by bit, attempting to erase the past, refusing to acknowledge the hurt and the horror and the heinous acts that have been done to my people and then hiding behind this inferior versus superior argument. That's what this bill will do. And since you know that, because we've told you that, you should want to do something about it. We get excited about all the people that come to Mississippi from around the world and we celebrate the fact that they get to go to the Civil Rights Museum and we try to promote this idea that we're unified and that we work together to bring down the flag. But you can't build and fund a Civil Rights Museum and then say that what's in this museum can't be taught in the classroom. That's what this bill will do. You can't pass a bill like this and continue the rhetoric that we should all work together. You cannot deny us the responsibility as legislators to do our job, but won't allow us to make amendments in committee and won't even consider legislation that has been introduced for years upon years upon years to truly make Mississippi better. Racial division has always worked, but we can show the country and we can show the world today 
that it's not going to work here in Jackson, Mississippi. Ida B. Wells once said, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon, him, upon them. And James 4.17 says it best, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. You have the opportunity to do the right thing today. The question is, will you do the right thing today? Thank you.